Mrs. Wilson has never been on a plane, so once she got to the airport, she was really confused at first, not knowing where to go. So the old woman took a look around and decided to follow a group of passengers who were hurrying to board their plane. She assumed that they knew what to do in this kind of situation. For a woman who grew up in one of the provincial towns in the state, check-in at the airport seemed incredible and even a bit mythical. The old woman hid the key to her home in her shoe, like she always does, to make sure she doesn't lose it. But she didn't know that the doorframe metal detectors would react to it. Even though Mrs. Wilson put on her best clothes for the trip, the way she looked made other passengers try to avoid crossing paths with her, mistaking her for a beggar or a woman from a low-income family. That's why the woman working at the check-in counter was very surprised to see that the old lady had a business class ticket. Meanwhile, Mrs. Wilson almost missed her flight because she was following passengers who were flying to the other end of the country. It was only thanks to the help of a kind airport employee that the old woman even got to the departure zone where some of the passengers were already waiting to board the plane. The man gave Mrs. Wilson a condescending smile and led her to the gate indicated on her boarding pass. He advised her to wait there so as to not get lost at the airport again. All this time, the old woman fiddled nervously with her purse in her hands, glancing at her watch every now and then. Is this your first time on a plane? Asked a nice looking young man, who apparently also had a business class ticket. Yes, it's my first time. I'm really worried. Mrs. Wilson's voice was trembling with excitement. That's when the boarding started and the flight attendant, smiling politely, asked the passengers to go into the boarding bridge, which connected the airport with the plane. Taking the old woman's boarding pass, the flight attendant escorted Mrs. Wilson to her seat. As it turned out, the old woman's seat was next to a smart-looking man, who had a displeased look on his face when he saw Mrs. Wilson. He put down his magazine and asked, This is business class, isn't it? Why should I pay extra to end up being seated next to this old beggar? Mr. Thompson, please calm down. Mrs. Wilson has the exact same kind of ticket as you do. You can see it here on her boarding pass. Here, take a look said the flight attendant, desperately trying to keep her cool. I don't want to look at anything. I get it, I should have bought an economy class ticket. The rude man raised his voice, still refusing to move his magazine from Mrs. Wilson's seat. All this time, the unfortunate old lady anxiously watched the argument unfold, not saying a single word. All the other passengers ended up unwittingly taking sides. Some sympathized with Mrs. Wilson, while others, on the contrary, were openly against her presence in business class. Among the defenders of the confused woman was the young man with whom she spoke while waiting to board the flight. Unwilling to put up with the man's heinous behavior, he decided to stand up for the old lady. Oh, for the love of God, Mrs. Wilson is much older than you are, and you're behaving like a true lowlife, keeping her standing while being lounged comfortably in your seat. After hearing the man's words, Mr. Thompson got noticeably embarrassed and calmed down a bit. But the storm of human indignation among the business class was already unstoppable. Not knowing what to do in this situation and how to get things under control, the flight attendant looked pleadingly at the old woman. Mrs. Wilson realized that she unwittingly became the culprit in this scandal. She sighed sadly and said, Oh, well, never mind. Let's not argue. I'll switch to the economy class and that'll be the end of it. Her eyes filled with tears as she said it, and it seemed that her life had lost all meaning at the moment. Feeling the withering looks of several pairs of eyes at once, Mr. Thompson decided to back down and remove the magazine from Mrs. Wilson's seat. Take a seat, Mrs. Wilson. It's your rightful seat, and you paid for it in full. Unable to say anything, the old lady sat down warily. However, the woman didn't notice that her handbag opened as she was sitting down. An old photograph with curved edges fell out of it, Mr. Thompson bent down and picked up the photo, noticing that a small boy was pictured in it. This picture probably means a lot to you, the man asked, giving the photo to his elderly neighbor. Mrs. Wilson carefully took the photo, as if it was the most precious thing in the world. She smiled at it, and her face brightened, making it seem as if all her wrinkles just magically smoothed out. Yes, this is my son. He's a pilot. He's actually flying the plane we're on right now. The old woman answered proudly, dabbing her eyes with a handkerchief. Hearing the words of this poor-looking woman, the business class passengers immediately settled down, ready to listen to her story. 
Dorothy Wilson said that she grew up in a poor family with four siblings. Her parents, Kate and John Wilson, ran a small farm that helped them avoid starving during difficult times. Dorothy was the oldest of all the children, and therefore all the hardships of raising them fell partially on her shoulders. Peter, the youngest of the brothers, was mentally challenged and required special care and attention. When World War II broke out, Dorothy's father volunteered for the army, where he fought against the Japanese military in the Pacific Islands. Before leaving, John Wilson gave his daughter a golden heirloom, which was inherited from his grandfather. He asked Dorothy to keep the family heirloom safe until his return. Unfortunately, John Wilson came home in a coffin covered with the national flag. The Wilson family was devastated with grief over the loss of the breadwinner and the head of the family. After the death of her father, Dorothy's mother became withdrawn and never met another man to spend her life with. Time went by. Dorothy was getting older and it was time for her to think about starting her own family. But instead, she had to stay with her mother, helping take care of her mentally challenged brother, Peter. Kate's two other children have long moved into a larger city, leaving their brother, sister, and elderly mother to the mercy of fate. It was only later in life that Dorothy Wilson met her true love. She was 28 years old, and she had already lost all hope of getting married. Jack was handsome, and he was a shepherd, driving flocks of sheep in search of places for pasture. Their relationship developed so rapidly that Dorothy felt that she was in a fairy tale. The couple was planning the wedding, but the bad fortune that followed the Wilson family wouldn't allow the poor girl to enjoy her happiness. One evening, Dorothy's mentally challenged brother Peter set their house on fire. Jack rushed in to try and save him, but unfortunately, they both died in the fire. Left without a home, Dorothy and her mother were forced to live in an old shack. They bought it with the money they had from selling Jack's sheep. It was then that Dorothy found out that she was pregnant. Unfortunately, by that time, her mother had already been showing signs of dementia, which manifested in aggressive behavior. It was more than once that Kate tried attacking her pregnant daughter with a knife, blaming all of her troubles on Dorothy. The unfortunate Dorothy gave birth to a beautiful baby boy, but every second she was afraid that her mother could unintentionally harm the baby. Dorothy spent three years living in a state of eternal fear for her child's life. Then, tired of the grief and misfortune that had befallen her in such a short time, Dorothy decided to send little Kevin to an orphanage. With tears in her eyes, Dorothy sincerely believed that the boy would be better off in an orphanage than living under the same roof with his grandmother who could harm him. After leaving her son at the orphanage, Dorothy lived with her mother for several more years until her death. Then, Dorothy went back to the orphanage, intending to take her son back home. But the woman was informed that Kevin had been adopted. Ever since then, Dorothy had been trying to find her son for many years. But it was only recently that she finally succeeded. It happened thanks to the volunteer organization that specialized in searching for missing relatives. Thus, she bought a business class ticket to be closer to her son, who was flying the plane at the moment. It just so happened that Mrs. Wilson managed to finally see Kevin exactly on the day of her 85th birthday. Now I can die in peace. I'm not sure if I'm going to heaven, but I'm very happy that my son Kevin is doing well said the old woman and sobbed softly. Mrs. Wilson's story didn't leave a single passenger indifferent. Some of them even completely changed their outlook on life. The old woman didn't notice how after hearing her story, the flight attendant went into the cockpit and said something to the pilot. A few minutes later, an announcement came over the intercom. Dear passengers, this is your captain speaking. Our flight is coming to an end, but our lives don't have to end with it. Each of our lives is full of ups and downs, but that's no reason to believe that some of us are more fortunate than others. We all get opportunities from our birth, and our lives depend on how we use them. Without making mistakes, we will not learn the joy of forgiveness. Therefore, we shouldn't look for the guilty when there aren't any, as we shouldn't hold a grudge against someone whom we might not be able to understand. And also, I'd like to tell my mother, who's flying with us today, that I love her very much, and that I have forgiven her a long time ago. She is a good person, and she deserves to be respected. After the pilot's words, the passengers gave him a standing ovation, happy to see that everything ended so well. When the plane touched down, 
Mrs. Wilson hugged her son for the first time in many years. <laughs> Crying with joy, the old woman handed Kevin the golden heirloom, which she kept all this time. The man carefully held the family heirloom and cried like a child, unable to contain his emotions. He's been waiting all his life for this moment. <laughs>